So what is going on in the Nazarene denomination? I'm going to open with an opening statement from our Emerging Church DVD that we passed out to 6, 000, over 6,000 people at General Assembly. This is Beverly Turner. My name is Beverly Turner. I'm an ordained elder and an evangelist in the Church of the Nazarene, the church that my family and I love and have had the privilege to serve in over the last 45 years. Recently, my husband and I have joined a group of dedicated, concerned Nazarenes from all across America as we biblically seek to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Today, we are faced with one of the most serious crises the Church of the Nazarene has dealt with since its inception. We must take a stand against those who are perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ and promoting the emergent ideology that is dividing and destroying many of our churches. We seek to expose also the wolves in sheep's clothing who are teaching in our Nazarene universities and our Nazarene theological seminary, classes on spiritual formation, which is no less than a form of monastic mysticism. Also, the presidents of our schools must be held accountable for allowing this teaching and allowing these professors to take our students to monasteries and having them partake in the Catholic Eucharist and other Catholic pagan practices. Our young people are being indoctrinated into another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, that the Apostle Paul warned the Corinthian church of. This is Christ's church. We are his body. This is our watch. This is our day. The information that we will be sharing on this DVD is vital to every Nazarene. The future of the church of the Nazarene is at stake. There's so much going on that I could spend an hour or two telling you, but for instance, Northwest Nazarene University uses books by many of these authors as part of their spiritual formation degree programs. Henri Newman, Richard Foster, Brother Lawrence, and many other usual suspects, Donald Miller, Brian McLaren, Darryl, Dallas Willard. And most Nazarene universities and our seminary use these books, again. Rob Bell, Steve Chuck, Henry Nguyen. And what disturbed me greatly uh, recently was the uncovering of a video from several years ago at Northwest Nazarene. And a lot of these universities allow these speakers to come in unchallenged to speak to our students and promote their false teachings. Such as Dr. Jane McDaniel, who believes in panentheism and who could not answer simply the question, is Jesus the only way to God, in the question and answer sessions. Uh, a, he's a man who believes that perhaps Jesus can be found in the Hindu or Buddhist, and they might not even recognize him, so therefore they can go to heaven also because they found Jesus in their own way. Uh, there is a link to that one hour session that I had a hard time going through the whole thing, but you as a pastor need to watch that to see what kind of stuff is being allowed in our universities. Here is a response that he had towards a student who had a question at the end, basically saying, asking him, is Jesus the only way? This is just part of the response, but listen to this. The Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God, and the Logos is the life that's the enlighten, that enlightens all people, and the Logos became enfleshed in Jesus. And so some Christians, and I'm among them, use the word Christ not only, not simply as a name for Jesus, but also as a name for uh, the Spirit of God at present throughout the world. 
Do, do you follow? And so, in all honesty, I see Christ outside Christianity. I, d I don't think the living spirit of Christ is reducible to historical Christianity. And I don't think it's reducible to those <coughs> who use Jesus' name. And I don't think it's reducible to those who, who point to Jesus. I, I think the spirit of Christ is found throughout the world. So when my Hindu, I think my Hindu can be open to Christ <laughs> without confessing Jesus. And if she is saved, <laughs> in a way she's saved through Christ, even as that does not mean that she believes in Jesus. That's answer two. Answer three. I don't know who goes to heaven. <laughs> and and I don't think it's important to know that. I don't think it's important to be able to say to yourself or to the world, I know who goes to heaven and I know who doesn't. I'm willing to let God be God. I'm willing to say God is more than my concept of God. And what I know as a Christian is I want to walk with Jesus. And I want to share in his journey. And I know that God meets me through Jesus, but not only through Jesus. God meets me through the hills and the rivers and the trees and the stars. God meets me through my friends and family. God meets me through John Coltrane. He's a jazz musician. That is the absolute worst that I've seen. And it's an example of the kind of teaching, again, unchallenged in the Nazarene universities. Unchallenged. Some of the professors will protest and say, well, we're just allowing someone to present their views. We, we don't necessarily agree with it. Later on, you will hear, if you listen to this uh, session, a student asking him, how can I take back this teaching to my congregation and tell them about it without getting them upset? How can I take this false teaching you just gave me and maybe teach them without getting them upset? Uh, this is the kind of outrageous extreme that is going on in our Nazarene denomination and in our churches. Some of them, not all of them. There were many Bible-believing Nazarene churches still left.